Ukraine says its forces continue to resist and, in fact, regain some ground outside Kiev. This is said to be a firefight about 30 kilometers to the northeast. The, fire, the fighters, rather, that you see here are thought to be from Chechnya, fighting the Russians on the Ukrainian side. And now we do want to take you to Kiev. We connect with journalist Terrell Germain Starr. He is the host of the Black Diplomats podcast and serves on the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. He's been reporting on Russia's invasion and Ukraine's defense from the very beginning. Terrell, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to the program. Thank you. So first, I want to get a sense of what it is that you are seeing and hearing on the ground, uh, especially for the past almost month now. You've been there. Well, um, what you hear are, are, are constant explosions in the background, and you hear uh, artillery fire on some days. Uh, it's better than others. Sometimes it's pretty quiet. Sometimes it's not quiet. And you, I've actually seen residential buildings that have been hit either with direct uh, air-to-ground missile strikes or the remnants of of um, munitions that have fallen from the fallen from the sky and hit residential buildings. Right now, um, we've been through curfews, martial law. Streets are very, uh, very empty relative to the city that I knew and have and have been coming to for years. Of three and a half million people, the size of you know, the city size of Chicago, bigger. So, I mean, yeah, I've seen a lot. We've all seen a lot. Experienced a lot. You know, there are so many reports about the human cost and how tremendous it is, how devastating it is. The loss of hundreds of children, the loss of, I think, 1,500 is the last number that I saw of civilians who were killed. What is it like to, to witness this? And you're speaking to people who have lost their relatives in this war. Well, not only people who've lost their relatives or people who have relatives that are trapped in cities that are surrounded by Russians, and it's indescribable. People have not prepared for this. They knew that Russia was an unfriendly neighbor, but many people still did not believe that Russia would go through this, through, through with this, and partly because of the human toll that's, and, you know, economic, political toll that's taken on them. Um, but to talk to people who are being displaced, uh, who have lost family members, who fear that they will lose family members in cities that are occupied by Russia. It's a helpless situation. And you're literally watching in real time how, how people are living with that, hoping and praying that their family members will turn out alive. It's, it's something where this is going to be a very traumatic psychological um, uh, damage that's going to be placed on people for years to come. You know, there's a lot of unexpected talk when it comes to Russia's actions, because you mentioned there that Ukrainians really did not believe initially that Russia would take this action. So maybe you can talk to us a little bit about the resiliency of the Ukrainian people, their resolve. Is this something that was also surprising to see? The resolve definitely was not something that was surprising to see in regards to this invasion because, one, this is their land and Ukrainians are uniquely different. And I think that's the main thing that we are, that people outside of Ukraine are realizing if people believe even just a little bit of Putin's propaganda that the Ukrainians and Russians are brothers, ironically, you, Russia is beating and killing and raping and pillaging their so-called brothers. Um, but you see that the Ukrainians are particularly unique. They, they welcome the Russians with a lot of cocktails with AK-47s, with whatever, whatever type of firepower they have. They weren't welcoming them with borscht, which is an original cuisine of Ukraine, by the way, um, and certainly not milk and cookies. And so the uh, Ukrainians are proving to the world that this is their land and they will fight to the very death. That's something that you see every single day here. And it's recently enough when I travel and I walk down the streets. Uh, people are relatively calm and relax, uh, relatively calm Given the circumstances, I mean, it's definitely uh, people have unfortunately gotten used to this war. So in the midst of all of this madness, you do see people trying to live a sense of normalcy. And as a foreigner here, uh, I am, you know, I'm, 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 I'm welcomed here with respect and kindness. But people, but the resilience and the, and the wrath that is being levied against the Russian soldiers, I think is something that many people did not expect out of Ukrainians, but we're seeing it before our very eyes. 
You know, Terrell, you're not only reporting, but you're also getting involved in Ukraine, too. Just today, you had tweeted this. I need to help uh, medevac a disabled person in Kiev hospital to the Slovak or Polish border. Can someone help me? Can you tell us a little bit about that journey and, and the people that you've helped? Yes. So when I came here earlier in January, I plan on getting the beginnings of a, a Ukrainian clothing resale business started, which I'm still doing. And to get a tourism business started, definitely not going to happen this summer, but for next year, hopefully once this war um, ends. But I knew that I was not going to leave Ukraine because this is a second home for me, a place I love dearly with all my heart. Of people here who are who are more family than they are friends for me. They, you know, the love that I have for people here goes beyond. Um, it, it goes beyond any blood ties that we don't have. And so it was just intuitive for me to use my platform to learn what I would do. And so, you know, I've worked with friends. Of my I have a platform, so people say, "Hey, we know how to get people to this um, hospital. We know how to get people." to this organization. If you get them to the board, we'll help. And so naturally, that's what I did. And, you know, just myself and, and friends of mine and, and my friend Andre, who's here, um, helped a few, you know, three families, basically. And um, with this person who is in the, in, in the hospital, you know, Ukraine was not a, a disability-friendly country um, before the war, certainly isn't now. But people reached out to me and asked if I can help. So I am looking for uh, someone to uh, medevac this person uh, outside, you know, he's a Congolese person uh, who's been here for years trying to get them out uh, to an EU border. So I'm continuing to work on that. So if any of your viewers know of any services here in Kiev, uh, let me know, um, because I'm certainly not equipped to do it. But I'm, but anytime someone asks me to help, I just thought to do so. And I know that for a lot of people, for a journalist to step outside of their role of just documenting what's happening is unusual. But again, this is my home and I'm going to document things that are happening and do an interview and do journalism, but I'm also going to help people because at the end of the day, once this news cycle ends, because it will end, I'm going to continue to be here and really to advertise, promote the beauty of this country because I love it and it's more than just a news story for me.